you ever wondered what's inside a pinball machine like this one? This is Champ, and it was made by Bally in 1974. I want to point out that this isn't actually my machine. It belongs to someone by the name of Dan, and it's in my possession because I'm fixing it for him. And I want to thank him for letting me use it in this video. Anyway, the reason why I say like this one is because being from 1974, this machine was built around three years before pinball machines started to become digitized. Before 1977, almost all pinball machines were operated using electromechanics. That's why they're considered electromechanical pinball machines. Now, if you think about how a more modern pinball machine might work, basically, you've got the play field, which has the mechanical elements on it, like the flippers and the bumpers and the slingshots, and it has switches and bulbs. And as the ball hits a switch, which is basically a target, the computer knows, okay, that target's worth 100 points and adds it to your score. And basically the computer can do other things like make different lights flash, but the thing is, everything's run by a computer, and it might be hard to figure out how it's doing that, but you know a computer is manipulating everything that's going on. But with a machine like this, there is no computer inside of it. You could consider this machine an electromechanical computer. However, how we know computers today, there isn't one in here. I'm making this video because I want to show you the different parts that make this machine work, but not only that, I want to do something that I'm not sure has ever been done before. I'm going to have different cameras running inside the machine, and I'll have the camera that you're looking through right now behind it so that you can see what's inside the back box, because there's actually quite a lot of mechanisms inside this piece of the machine as well. And then I'm going to have a fourth camera located above the playfield so that way we can synchronize what is happening on top of the playfield with what's happening inside the machine. When we get to this part of the video, I would highly recommend that you make the video full screen and turn on HD if you can in your area. But anyway, before we get to that part of the video, I want to first explain that the machine basically is operated using only three different mechanisms. There's your solenoids, your relays, and your stepper units, which are basically elaborate relays. There's also something called the score motor, and that's very important to the operation of the machine because it's what creates repetitive sequences. Like, say you score 500 points, well, this digit needs to move five times, and it's what makes that happen. Regardless, first we need to look at what the machine actually has inside of it, and I'll show you how we get into it. Access to all pinball machines' insides is actually through the coin door. This coin door needs a new lock on it. But basically, once you open the coin door, there's a lever, and it's sometimes located up top, and on this machine is located on the side. And the lever releases the lockdown bar, which is this piece of metal. Now, in most machines, the lockdown bar will come up, and you'll slide the glass out. But in this machine, actually, the side rails, the lockdown bar is all one piece. So we take it all off like this. Now, one thing that you may not have known is that the play field is actually just resting in here. It's off. It's very much like a car hood. You just pull up on it and it comes out. Nothing even to unlatch. Before you do that, though, you want to get the ball out of it so that way it doesn't come crashing down to the top. So I'm going to put this in my pocket where I know where it is. But so if we lift up on the play field, here's what's underneath it. We have a prop so we can hold it up. All right, so here we are on the inside of the machine, and this is the bottom of the cabinet. Well, you're looking at the bottom right, that's the chime unit, that's what actually makes the sounds. And the power transformer is right in the middle. The power transformer creates the voltage needed for the solenoids, relays, and bulbs. Now, the relays, along the right side of the screen, those are all relays. They have, most of them have green paper wrappers, and then they have a bunch of switches attached to them. We'll look at relays more in a minute. Now the two things in the middle, I'll move to the left so that way you can see them a little better. Those are both stepper units. The one on the right is the bonus stepper unit and the one on the, or I'm sorry, the one on the right is the ball count stepper unit and the one on the left is the coin unit. Now stepper units basically count things. That's basically what you can think of them doing. The ball count unit basically says, okay, you're on ball two, now you move to ball three, now you move to ball four, it's counting things and at the end of the game it resets back to ball one. Now, this thing here, with all the switches and wires going to it, this is called the score motor. And the reason why it's called the score motor is because it is motorized. You can see the motors right here, and there's a gear reduction system which turns these cams. Now, as the cams turn, they actuate all the different stacks of switches. This is what makes things that are repetitive happen. Say something needs to add 500 points, then 
A circuit is created between one of the switches that will bounce up and down five times with the rotation of the score motor. The reason why it's called the score motor is because it generally is calculating things to do with scores and resetting the score reels and doing other reset sequences. But basically, anything that involves any repetition whatsoever is going to go through the score motor. To give you an idea of what it looks like in operation, I'll reset the machine. Did you see how it went around and all the switches were bouncing around? I'll do it again. So the score motor is what allows various things to happen. Basically, you can think of it as the brain of the, of the machine. This is the thing that's closest to a computer. And really, this is what causes the most problems when a pinball machine starts to have issues. But now I'll take a look at the solenoids. This is a solenoid. This is actually the right flipper solenoid. And this white paper part here, this is the coil. This is actually an electromagnet. And this part down here is the shaft. When these are energized, an electromagnetic field forces the shaft inside of the coil. And it happens at great speed and with quite a lot of force. And basically anything that moves in your pinball machine is going to use a solenoid. So I'll press the flipper button. You can see what it looks like. It's a very powerful mechanism. Things like pop bumpers, slingshots, and flippers all use solenoids. In fact, the stepper units that we looked at earlier also use solenoids. Here's a simple stepper unit in operation. This is called the spinner unit, and the reason why it's called the spinner unit is because it is attached to the spinner. This machine has functionality that each time the spinner revolves 10 times, it adds bonus. So I will, hopefully, turn the spinner by hand and you can see what it looks like. So you can see the solenoid at the back, which has the green paper wrapper, is pulling back on this little mechanism which goes in a circle each time it's pulled back. So that's a simple stepper unit. They get more and more complex from there. But again, this is just a basic parts overview. Uh, there will be a second video that I'll make, and there will be a link in the description where we go into more parts in detail. Now we'll take a look at a relay. Okay, I'm actually in the back box of the machine now because it's easiest to show you what a relay looks like because I can get close to them. So again, this is an electromagnet. It's not actually a solenoid, but what happens is as this gets pulled back like this, it causes different things to happen because this little plastic piece here is pulling back these switches, which causes them to actually close. So if I move it with my thumb, you might be able to see what I'm talking about. What this is, this is one of the reset relays. This is what resets the score uh, display to zero. There are actually two of them because to have all the solenoids that the score uh, reels use would overload the circuitry in the machine. But anyway, this is a relay. It's an electromagnetic switch, and sometimes they control more than one thing at a time. These relays actually control eight different things at one time. So that is a relay, and now we've taken a look at all the different parts, and we'll go inside the machine. All right, so I've got the game on a four-player game, as in all the score reels are out of the zero position. So I'm going to press Start, and you'll get to see the machine reset. Alright, so let's have another look at that reset sequence, but this time from behind the back box. Pay attention to the score reels as they reset, and also look at the reset relays. There's so much current going through them that you can see sparking at the contacts. I'm actually going to play a two-player game so that way you can see some of the mechanisms and how they change when there are two players. So I'm going to add a player, and here we go.
So that was, that's how it played. I'll do the reset sequence again in case you want to take a look at that again. And I'll play a one player game. wraps up the video on this pinball machine. I hope you enjoyed watching it as much as I enjoyed making it. 
I can tell you, even as someone who understands these machines pretty well and has been working on them for a little while, it was really cool to see the different mechanisms go off as the ball made it happen. I understand in my head as I play these machines what's going on, but I've never been able to see the ball hit a slingshot and then see the actual relay energized in the back, or in this case, in this particular machine, maybe see the bonus countdown happen through the bonus accumulator relay as it ha or stepper unit as it happens. Just really cool, and I mean, I had a lot of fun making it just because now I know I, I can see inside the machine as it's going on. Uh, I hope you had this sort of feeling that I do of how cool it is because, you know, as a pinball geek or nerd, I would get that feeling more than other people, but I, I think that it's cool to see just the insides of the machines while they're working, and it's hard to do that with the pinball machine, and I think it was successful with using my iPad and iPhone. And uh, let me know if you feel the same. If you have any questions about pinball machines that I can answer, feel free to ask them, and I will answer them if I can, as soon as I can. And I know I said that I'm going to make another video where I talk about the parts of the machine in more detail, and I will try to get that up soon, but to tell you the truth, if this machine leaves my hands before I can do that, I won't be able to make that video for quite a while because my other machine is actually on location now at the Happy Hobo's Little Red Caboose in Putnam, Illinois. Plug for that place. Go ahead, excellent burgers, and play my machine, please. But anyway, I don't have a fully assembled machine that I can show you parts on if this one leaves, so I'll try and get that done as soon as I can, but again, I really hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it, and even as much as I enjoy watching it after I've made it. And uh, believe it or not, I have actually already made most of the video. I am doing this after the fact, and I'm just going to tack it on to the end because for those of you that don't know, I have a new video editing software and also a new laptop. And this video is really going to put it through its paces because I've never been, I've never had to do split screens, do four different video tracks. But man, I learned a lot just making the video, but it was also really fun. So anyway, hope you enjoyed it, and I will sign off with my usual. I am Alec, also known as Edison Phono One. Thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video.